Welcome, my name is Harry Jacobs and I am the North of 60 Gamer. Today we're going to take a look at the Kickstarter Fallen Land. But before we do that, I just want to let you know that I've started a Facebook page called North of 60 Gaming. So please go onto Facebook, search it up, have a look. I'd really like you to enjoy coming into my community and my family. The notion behind this Facebook page is to accomplish two things. One, to promote gaming north of 60 in our northern territories, our smaller communities, because they don't often have an opportunity to hear about board games, even if it's Magic or Monopoly. The other is I want people who are over 60 to learn about board gaming. I am over 60. It, this is not just a young person's hobby. So please join me on my Facebook page and say hi. So without further ado, we're going to take a look at the new Kickstarter, Fallen Land, and whether or not I am going to back it personally. As you know, I have my criteria, and we're going to go over that in the video. We're going to look at the page, and then at the end, I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to back it or not. So please join me. I am the North of 60 Gamer. So today we're looking at Fallen Land 2nd Edition Big Box and Descendants Expansion. This is already funded. There's nine days to go left in the campaign as of today when I'm making this video. And they have raised over $164,000. So congratulations to Fallen Dominion Studios. This game is a post-apocalyptic game taking place after a biological and nuclear apocalypse in, the, in North America. And you are the leader of a faction of survivors competing against other for supremacy. You're going to want to equip your group. You're going to want to search. You're going to fight. You're going to do some PvP. And you're going to play this game on a board of North America and Canada. To me, that's appealing. As a Canadian, I like things that are Canadian. I like post-apocalyptic games. So I think, so far, if we were to look at the theme, I think it would be a game that I would back. Next up, I like to evaluate the rules. I like looking at the rules. One of the criteria I really like to have is, can I learn this game from the rules? Now, I have to admit, I did watch a couple of the reviewers and previewers in this campaign, and one of the common themes was they did not like the rule book. Actually, I was quite surprised that they actually allowed a reviewer who had quite a number of cons of this game in the, his preview. Honesty is the best policy. You got to know what you're getting into. So I have the rule book up here. And we'll just look at it a little bit. There's a table of contents. There is some flavor text. And then we get into the rules. Now, granted, it is a work in progress, but I look at this and I just go, oh my God, I'm going to have to wade through over 40 pages of rules. And I'm looking at it going like, oh my God, where's, are there examples here? There's a lot of text. And that was one of the major complaints of one of the reviewers. So right away, I'm going to tell you that I am a kinesthetic learner. I like to learn a game as I'm playing it. I like to watch videos. I do like rules. Don't get me wrong. I think rules are important for reference and playthroughs. But I'm looking at this rules. If I had to learn this game through the rules, I doubt I would be able to do it. So I think this is going to be a big pet peeve of mine, and this is a major turnoff for me in looking at backing this for myself. So don't get me wrong, you don't have to agree with me. This is just not something I like in a game, is walls of text in the rules, having to wade through 42 pages of text, and then trying to find a specific rule. So we'll go down to the end here. Let's just see if they have an index. So if they don't have an index in here, you're going to be against a major wall looking for specific rules. Oh, good. They have an index at least. Now, 
the way I like rules to be formed is they take you through a, a, a game at a very high level, a tutorial, with a rules reference. So teaching to set up some of the, the major points of the game, like how to move, how to interact, how to finish a mission, and then have a rules reference to help you move on from learning the game. So I'm going to think that people who are who have issues learning from a rule set like this, it's going to be a turnoff. It is for me, but again, this is all about me because I'm. This is how I evaluate games. Next, one of my major criteria is the playability of the game. Now I'm looking at the site here, and you can see here's the game overview. You looks like it's as simple as move and explore. You're going to capture a resource. You're going to draw an encounter. And you're going to complete a mission. This looks very similar to many other games in this type of genre. Runebound, where you explore, you draw an event, you interact, you gain your resources, your gold, your items. And you build up towards the ultimate end in this case, I know there's a victory point. It doesn't really talk about that, that in there. So again, I'm not getting a sense of what the victory is. How do I get to the end of this game? Now, I went down and I did look at the videos. They do. There's victory points, and I think you have to reach 100 victory points or 20 influence points. I wasn't convinced that the reviewers really liked the game themselves. The fact that the reviewers on this page are not mainstream reviewers doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy so it does concern me so I think that the fact that a mainstream reviewer hasn't looked at this game doesn't build confidence in the product that I'm looking at again I'm not saying that I wouldn't back this at this point but again we are sitting at basically as a playability and if I looked at the video, one of the guys was basically saying, this game is big, there's a lot to do, there's a big learning curve. If you're looking for a quick, easy game to set up and go, I'm not thinking that this is the game that is going to be for you. And I can tell you from my collection, I want a game that I can set up in 15 minutes, play in less than two hours, and tear down in about 15 minutes. I'm getting the impression that is not this game. So, what's in the box? You can see here the core sets, there's the game box, the rules, the game board, we got town play mats, we've got organizer trays, always a bonus, thank you. This adds to the quality of life. We have game tokens and chips, we have dice, we have 12 sided dice, 6 sided dice, we have character cards, action cards, counter cards. We have cards for everything. And we just add more of it when we add the expansion. More cards, more factions, more tokens, more organizers, more dice. We have some deck dividers, always nice. Quality of life for finding things, very important. Oh, there's even a solo variant. There are a number of solo variants. Uh, that covers off typically my fifth point of what's in the box is if you can play solo. So that's important to me. So it's hitting that. And here's that very important second edition versus first edition. What's different? There's more. Bigger boards, more cards, more map, more trays, updated rules. There seems to be a lot in the deck. Now we're looking at our reward tiers. So we have our expansion for $39. That's great, separate it out. If you just want the big box, $89. If you want the core set, $118. And if you want it all in, $175 with the neoprene mat. Uh, what else is there? It looks like there's some other expansions and smaller expansions for So it looks like there's lots and lots of pledge levels to fit everybody's budget. There's some stretch goals. 
daily reveals. So it doesn't look like so far it's a monetary based stretch goals, which is great. So they're putting a lot of thought into their stretch goals. And then of course the add-ons. The sleever boxes, the neoprene mats, if you want extra chip trays, more skill dice, the smaller expansions. So there's a lot here. Shipping's not bad. Um, $32 for an all-in pledge for Canada. That's almost $40 worth of shipping, maybe a little bit more. I'm a completionist. So let's just go down and look at some of these pledge levels. $39 just for the expansion. If you want the core set, $89. The core set plus the expansion, $118 US. So that's $161 Canadian. If you want all in, it's $175 or $224 Canadian. Tack that on with the $42, the, the $30 worth of shipping. You're looking at a $300 game. That's a lot in the box. Now, it looks like the components are very high quality. I like that in the game. So, what do I think about this game overall? I'm going to tell you how I feel about this game and whether or not I'm going to back it and how I feel about the value of the game itself. So, will I back this game or not? So, let's take a review quickly over my criteria and see whether I can tick this off and make it work for me or not. I generally evaluate this in my, on my criteria because those games that I buy against my criteria generally are played and others that I've bought because of the fear of missing out tend to sit on the shelf, new and shrink, and I never get to them. And I want to play these games. As an older player, I really don't want to be sitting on games that are doing nothing in my collection. Now, Let's just say that I think putting it all together, starting backwards, is that I think the resale is going to be here. So I think that if you buy this, don't like it, the game is going to hold its value. So if you're going to spend that $300 Canadian, chances are you're going to get your $300 out of it. So with that being said, let's look at the theme. I like the theme. Surviving a, a nuclear biological apocalypse? Who doesn't like that? I love Fallout. Why wouldn't I like this theme? It's a big board game, though. Looking at the rules. Even the reviewer said, if you don't like to read, you're not going to like this game. So that we're going to be very dependent on reviewers and learn to play videos, which aren't out there yet. Usually when this game games are this close, you start to see these how to play videos out there. I didn't see really a lot of that in the campaign. I mean, they do describe the play, but they really don't sit down and tell you how to play. That's a concern. The fact that it's not on Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator is a big one for me too. I do like to be able to look at it, see the components, read the rules, see if I can play the game. Without that aspect of a big game like this, not sure I would back it. The 120 to 300 minute play time, I don't have six hours to play a game. So again, major, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of replayability in the box. Like once you play and once you learn, I think this game is going to be infinitely replayable if you can get it to the table. And that two hours to six hour play time, I doubt I would ever get this to the table more than once and whether I'd even finish the game, that would be another question. I love what's in the box. Tons of components. Looks like good quality components. I think you're good there. So I don't think that's an issue with this game. I, I think that the overall, the quality of life components in this game is fantastic. I like good quality of life. So that impresses me. The fact that it has a solo mode, that impresses me. So, what is my verdict? And again, you can have different opinions, and I encourage you to go down into the comments and tell me about your different opinions. 
because we don't have to agree. I am not a paid previewer, reviewer. This is just me having a conversation with you about what I like in a game, and you can agree or disagree. Overall, I think the value of this game is going to hold, and it's good. So if you have a fear of missing out, and if the game doesn't work out for you, you're going to, I believe on the secondary market, you're going to get your money back or pretty close. I've asked people, they like to set that 90% back benchmark. So if you can get 90% back, they're, you're happy. I think it's going to hold its value. And I think you might even get more, especially if you go all in, because you're going to have all the fancy stuff that may only be exclusive to the Kickstarter. For me personally, games that are two to six hours, no. Games that have a rule book that is almost undecipherable with walls of text, no. The, the game that doesn't have a TTS or Tabletopia, no. The game where I saw reviewers really having more cons than pros about the game is a, is a concern. So for me, I will not be adding this game to my collection. That is my conclusion. And I thank you for listening.